Hello everyone, and welcome to video two of the Forcepoint Spotlight On series around generative AI. And in this video, we'll be talking about restricting access and allowing AI usage. In a lot of conversations we have with customers, we have a lot of use cases and proper recommendations that we can provide. The most common scenario that comes up typically is, what about the fear of newly created Gen AI sites? Uh, it's as easy as just talking to ChatGPT and say, help, help me create a new website. What are the fears that come along with that? The typical answer we have is within proxy solutions and URL filtering. That can be in the form of risk reputation. Risk reputation looks at the age, the popularity, the interactions with that site, and then any reports of known threats against that domain that may be improperly used. Secondly is URL categories. That's going to give us the ability to limit certain websites. And URL categories pretty much just put websites in a, in a bucket like computer and internet information, and then we can then decide to either block or allow that entire group of websites to be accessed. Lastly are exceptions. And exceptions are going to give certain users, let's say a specific IT team, an individual user, or a business unit that are approved to access ChatGPT. And maybe we can warn them by saying, hey, before you access this website, please click here to continue because we have those additional security controls in place. So to allow that usage, we need to start thinking about monitoring. And typically with monitoring comes with data loss prevention solutions. DLP is a very easy way for us to analyze sensitive data interactions between that website. Maybe that is a IT administrator uploading source code to GitHub, right? And maybe that information is proprietary to the business and it can't be leaked to a public GitHub page. Or what if you're that marketer that's trying to build that campaign about a brand new product launch that isn't happening yet and you accidentally leak that project name? That would be a major concern. So let's flip the script to compliance. What if you are a bank or a healthcare firm and you're really serious about HIPAA and PCI violations, right? In another way of pr providing protections, we can do remote browser isolation. That's gonna put any user that clicks that continue button in a virtualized container. That way they can still access the site to do their daily job function, but we can add those additional controls like data loss prevention, or even remove the ability to view certain web pages, click within that web page, and then thus limit their interactions within that website so they can just start using it, but do it securely. And the last scenario what we have are really robust protections. And those robust protections might be in the form of content disarm reconstruction or CDR. CDR is kind of a newer technology on this industry. And what it's going to do is protect against any zero day, never seen before threats that maybe EDR or signature based solutions can't protect. It pretty much treats every file uploaded or downloaded that contains a macro or is seen as non-unique or off the standard deviation of that file. And then we can then protect that securely because it sanitizes the entire file and recompiles it from scratch. So in case you are that you know malicious IT administrator that you're trying to upload some code and you harden it and then you make it malicious with a payload, when that user tries to download that new malicious package intending to distribute it across the organization, but by the time they do that download, it's sanitized in real time, and then all the malicious code is stripped out. If you have any questions about these technologies, check out our website to learn more. And thanks for watching.